Springtime is here and I cannot be the only one who is stoked and excited to get ready for some backpacking trips. But there's some things that we got to take care of before we get out on trail. And we're going to start out talking about the spring top up. And when I talk about the spring top up, I mean we are going to top up a couple things in our backpacking gear loadout that's going to make life significantly more comfortable and better for us out on trail. And as I've been holding it the whole time, we're going to start out with the cook kit. Now the biggest thing when it comes to our cook kit that I see a lot of people forget to stock up and they just kind of assume it's always going to be there and assume it's always going to have fuel and that is our lighter. Now I know from checking inside my lighter works but a big thing when it comes to stocking up our lighter is making sure that we pick a brightly colored lighter to have in our gear loadout. And when you've got kind of one of those drab colored lighters and a bunch of hair flying in your mouth now when you've got one of those drab colored lighters, it's really easy to misplace when you set it down on the ground. But if you have, say, an obnoxiously pink lighter, it's very, very likely you're going to see that when you set it down on the ground. So when it comes to stocking up a lighter, make sure you put a brightly colored one in your gear. Now another thing I always make sure I have topped up in my backpack in the spring is mustard packets and specifically yellow mustard. Now the reason I carry yellow mustard packets in my backpack is I'm actually pretty prone to getting calf cramps. It doesn't really matter how much water I drink throughout the day or how many electrolytes I'm putting into my system. On a longer backpacking trip, I'm inevitably gonna get a cramp at some point in time. And the acetic acid content in yellow mustard works amazing at taking the cramps away. This is my poop kit. You have a poop kit, right? I figure everybody has a poop kit. Uh, inside my poop kit, I carry the basic simple stuff. I carry my trowel, some toilet paper, a spare lighter, hand sanitizer, stuff like that. But I also carry a bag of wet wipes. Being a dad of a toddler, it's pretty easy to get a stockpile of wet wipes in my house. They are a game changer to keep in your poop kit, obviously for, you know, a nice little freshen up after number two. I know the backcountry bidets are a big thing right now, but uh, I just can't bring myself to fire ice cold glacier water up my butthole. Um, I use wet wipes to clean up after number two, but I also use wet wipes every night to give myself kind of my little ghetto bath. Uh, you know, something to just kind of wipe the grime and muck off my feet and get a little bit of the sweat and stuff off my arms and my armpits before I crawl to bed. Just kind of gets me feeling a little bit more clean and sanitary and makes me feel a little bit more human before I crawl into bed. One more thing to keep in mind for our spring top up is our electronics, be it a headlamp, a battery bank, if you carry a camera, if you've got a GPS unit, making sure those electronics are topped up before we head out on trail can be really, really important. This one here specifically, the battery bank rings true for me. Uh, I was headed out on a backpacking trip with the boys a couple years ago and realized about two hours from the trailhead that holy crap i had forgot to top up my battery bank so i was pulled over on the side of the highway digging that out of my backpack getting it plugged into my truck luckily devon is always late for every trip we go on so i had an extra hour and a half in the parking lot to add a little bit more charge to that before i hit the trail but uh, making sure your batteries and you know any electronics are topped up before we hit trail super important now before I hit the trail in the morning and before I've even got my backpack completely loaded up, something that I like to do is I like to take my food bag and I pull out whatever I plan on having for lunch that day and I put that into a separate Ziploc bag and I put that at the top of my pack outside of my food bag. That way whenever I stop for lunch, I'm not having to root through my bag and pull my food bag out dump that all on the ground and go rooting through there to try and find whatever I want to eat for lunch and then stuff that back in when I'm in the middle of the trail. I find having my lunch kind of set aside and pre-packaged up just makes things a lot more convenient. It's a lot more efficient out on trail. And like I said, then I'm not digging through and I'm not dumping my lunch bag in the middle of the trail. I honestly absolutely hate doing that. Uh, but I'll fully admit, even when I've got it all preloaded up, there's a lot of times I stop for lunch and decide I want something different and I dump my lunch bag out on the trail anyways. So trying to be proactive doesn't always work for me, but maybe it'll work for you. Now this one I didn't even plan on including in this video. I actually just kind of thought about this off the top of my head. I uh, had a flashback to a backpacking trip last spring. Now the issue I ran into on this trip last spring was I took my Platypus quick draw filter. I didn't have it on a bottle. I had it on my Canuck Vecto bag. But the issue that I ran into was my filter had sat all winter. Uh, you know, th both ends were left open. I left it sit to dry out. And I didn't pre-soak my filter before I went out on trail. 
and it took me about 20 minutes of squeezing with that Canuck Vecto bag to just saturate the filter and get it flowing again. Uh, just something to think about before you head on a spring backpacking trip. If your water filter has been sitting out all winter, maybe just, you know, let it sit in a bowl of water for a little bit, let it pre-soak. Uh, it'll hydrate the filter and kind of get it saturated and water will flow through a lot better when you get out on trail. Now, as spring always seems to be the time of year that we add new backpacking gear to our loadout in preparation for summer backpacking trips. I mention this almost every year. I'm going to mention it again. I know you guys love it. Testing your gear and checking your gear at home. Now, the reason I'm doing some gear testing today is not to test the waterproofness of this tent. I've already previously tested that, but I did get a new sleeping pad this year. Now, what I've got here is my 1.5P Lanshan or the Lanshan Leaning Tower from 3FUL. 1.5 person tent. This is the tent that Wanda and I use on our backpacking trips when we have to go to ground. The new sleeping pad that I picked up this year from Zen Bivy is the wide version. Now the reason I set this tent up today is to see how much less space is inside this tent with the extra five inches from the wide pad and looking at how much room Wanda's gonna have. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that this is gonna work. I think it's gonna be a little bit too cramped for her and I with the wider pad for me. So when it comes to ground dwelling trips for Wanda and myself, I'm either gonna have to make the choice to take my more narrow sleeping pad or I'm gonna have to go to a two person trekking pole tent instead of the one person tent that I've been using previously. Uh, gear testing is very, very important, not just for checking the waterproofness of your tent, but to make sure that all your gear is gonna fit and make sure it's all gonna work together. Now, if you guys have any backpacking tips that you go through in the springtime that I haven't listed in this video, please let me know in the comment section down below. It helps me out, it helps everybody else out and helps fuel this channel with more content to create for you guys. And if you guys are looking for more tips and tricks, check out either of these videos here. I'm sure you'll find something in there you'll enjoy. And as always, I am Maddie. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you on the next one.